Hello and welcome back to the Gay CC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping into some pro revenge. Our first story today comes to us from Apophis 1942. Boy meets girl. Let's jump right in. I am a non-traditional student. I have a troubled past with several arrests. Important detail to ascertain the girl's motives later. I got my life together and joined the military. After the service, I started attending university. One thing I learned in service which applies to everything in school and work is, everything must be documented or it didn't happen, which helped save my life and career in this story. During this story, I am in my third year of undergrad and studying for admissions into a professional degree, lawyer, medicine, dentist, etc. I'll not name which one. The anti-hero in this story was an attractive, charismatic sociopath, let's call her V, who had thousands of hours of volunteering, shadowing professionals, and research in our goal field. She was involved as an officer of every club I ever attended, and as the Honor Council Chair, overseeing the school's proceedings with academic integrity, was privileged to the workings of how students were caught cheating and how to circumvent these systems, foreshadowing, Basically, she is a super villain. Our romance began over the summer semester. I was studying for the admissions exam, and this girl often sat right in the first table in front of the library, so everyone sees her when they walk in. Her central appearance was paramount to her overall scholastic and social strategy. I saw her every day, so naturally, we began interacting. I saw beta orbiters bringing her food and gifts all day every day. She appeared to be flirting with them to get their homework answers, and it worked. She was sizing up my usefulness as well, and I was immediately getting a bad vibe from her. However, we had a similar goal and could help each other. I would share the study materials I brought with her, and associating with her gave me a certain amount of popularity, so it was a fair trade. We would go to local restaurants after long study hours, I always paid, and she started inviting me over to her house to sleep on the couch so she had a person to wake her when she needed to get up in the morning. This girl was like a robot, highly capable of non-stop productivity, highly intelligent, and slept like she had a dead battery. It was nearly impossible to wake her, which became a useful flaw later when she tried to get me involved in some illegal crap. Eventually, our relationship evolved into more, and I tried to put my suspicions about her being a sociopath behind me, but I was lying to myself. We were official for at least two months, and V was posting us together on social media, but every two weeks or so, she would make out with a guy at the club, or I'd come across sexual texts with her and other students. We used each other's phones. I also came across a list of boys and their pros and cons. Under my name was some unfair criticisms, and one statement, equally demented as me, might be useful. I showed a friend, and we were both like, WTF does that mean? But I suspect it's due to my criminal history. Whenever she wanted a gift, such as a purse, or that pink waterproof Polaroid camera, V would lure me into her room and ask for it. When I declined to oblige her, she would stand in front of her door crying, blocking my escape, saying I didn't love her anymore. She'd claim her other girlfriends get houses and cars from their boyfriends while she only wants this or that. This would continue for hours, and I missed many classes. She had her own money, she often bought expensive fitness fashion gear to wear around the school, but she wouldn't divulge where her money came from. I often pressed V for information on how she earned income, but she would give conflicting answers about grants and scholarships until one day. About six months after our first meeting, she finally tells me, and it is not good. I was interviewing at a professional school when I received the call. She's in trouble, big trouble, and needs my help. She tells me she earns money by doing others' assignments for them. $200 to write a paper, and $800 to complete an online class, usually a 100-level introductory course. She describes the method she used to circumvent the IT's detection of others completing others' assignments, and how her client wasn't doing his part to copy and paste and submit from his own computer. He is failing the course and blames her. He threatens to turn her in. Her plan is to refund his money and wants me to follow him to see if he goes somewhere alone and take his phone, because that has all the evidence of their communications. Holy crap! 
She wants me to commit strong armed robbery, a felony for her. I'm not going down for this or with her and I know nobody would believe me. Enter military experience. If there's no record, it didn't happen. So I agreed to help her somehow as soon as I returned to town. I go to V's dorm the next night and she shows me everything. Her list of clients, their blackboard passwords, how she meets them, how she defends them during honor code violations, etc. So I tell her not to worry. I'll handle everything on the day she refunds his money. Relieved, she goes to bed, but before she lays down, I ask to use her computer for one assignment and she says, sure, do whatever you want. In my state, if you let someone use your electronics, it's called having privilege, and anything you do with their computer, which may harm them, is legal as if it is your own computer. So I took screenshots of her conversations with her clients, I opened Google settings, and screenshot all of the Blackboard users and passwords stored on her computer. I go to her messenger and screenshot their conversations. Back home, I compiled our recordings and saved our Facebook conversations. A week later, I made up an argument about an upcoming New Year's party and broke up with her. Then sat on the information I had on hand for two more weeks thinking about what I should do. I remembered how she has a history of arrests from high school to freshman year for stealing from outlet malls and selling their loot online, never formally charged. She, of course, admitted this from her application into professional school. How she admitted finding a mark and using them to pass her courses. How she denigrated others who were completing courses through hard work. How she used her position as honor counsel to get her friends out of trouble while helping to expel others for doing exactly what she was doing. How she cheated on me multiple times, used me, manipulated me, tried to make me commit a felony and ruin my life. She had to be stopped. Knowing she was friends with the faculty on the honor council, they often bought each other gifts. I had to go above their heads. I gave names and descriptions of the events to my program director. He then goes to the honor council anyway. I was called into the honor council's head office of corrupt administrator. Corrupt administrator tells me I should delete the information I have because it could become a civil matter and I should consider my self-preservation. She schedules another meeting with me a week later. I return and she asks if I want to make a statement about V. Guess what I said? I tell her no. I deleted everything and I don't remember because I was in the military and I know how to play ball when superiors tell you to shut your mouth. But the most important reason I decided not to file against V directly was due to the fact I was applying for a military scholarship to pay for professional school. Since I did not follow through, the program director filed an honor code violation complaint against V on a date suggested by corrupt administrator. A month later they tell me their investigation was inconclusive and they will close the case due to the director waiting one day too long to file according to the school's academic policy. Corrupt administrator set us up. However, since the director used my name as a source, they must notify V because students have rights to know their accusers. FML. Corrupt administrator effed me and ruined my chance for a case against V based on a technicality. Now I fear for my safety, because V tried to get me to strong arm rob someone, now I just implicated a dozen cheaters who have as much as her to lose. Corrupt administrator schedules a meeting with V and tells her about an ongoing investigation, and tells her she will be kept up to date. I know the investigation is over, and now they are just doing formalities. V requests the information of the investigation, and they promise to email it to her. V calls me for support even though we aren't together. She is crying and talking about hurting herself. She tells me her dad had been paying for her college this whole time and starts coming clean with other lies. I feel bad and almost regret everything. Maybe she is not a sociopath. Maybe she is really sorry. She stays at my house the next few days. I'm watching her trying to keep it together. Then her effing clients start coming to my house. She is still doing their assignments. She never learns. Finally, she gets the investigation info and there's my name. She calls me 130 times in three days, sends her friends to my classes to tell me to come to her house. Finally, I do, but I don't go into her room because she will trap me. She takes my phone so I can't record. She tries to get me to sign a paper, saying I fabricated everything and it's all false. 
I tell V, they already closed the investigation, you won't get in any trouble, why should I implicate myself and get in trouble, it won't solve anything. And she pleads, do you still love me? I shake my head and walk out. Two days later, police are waiting at my house to serve a 72 hour emergency protective order commanding me to stay away from V. I know what she is up to. She's trying to get me to violate the protective order, discredit me, and send me to jail. It's very easy to lie to create one and lie to say it was violated. Now it's not just revenge time, it's war. Here's the plot twist. I never really deleted the files as I told corrupt administrator, thank you very much Google Drive. After the 72 hours emergency protective order expired, another emergency protective order arrives, which lasts two years, but requires a court appearance. This is a huge problem, because I am in the US Army Reserves, and it requires the handling of firearms, which is illegal under an emergency protective order. Her lawyer calls me and threatens me not to participate in any more investigations against her, and sends a paper tiger. I get a lawyer, let's name him Folds Like a Lawn Chair, he tells me, who will they believe, a pretty girl or you? I fire him, get a better lawyer, a trial lawyer called Miss Badass Esquire, and prepare for war. Miss Badass requests a copy of V's emergency protective order from the court. It essentially says I was blackmailing her, threatening to beat her up, and I broke into her room to steal incriminating information against her. All lies. I provide my lawyer the entire history of our relationship, 600 pages of Facebook and text messages showing she is the aggressor, the abuser in the relationship, phone call history, all the recordings and screenshots of her cheating ring. I make a poster sized chart of her room and the events that transpired there the day in question when she tried to trap me into signing a statement taking responsibility for her actions. Court date. We made V and her lawyer look really stupid. They were going with the pretty girl strategy, but the dorm gave us records showing she was signing me in and out of her room, so it discredits the need to break in. The call logs, 130 times in 3 days, and aggressive texts showed she wasn't actually afraid of me, and it was her, not me, being aggressive. And when he asked what I had to use to blackmail her, her lawyer said, just some tutoring papers, for which the judge said, that doesn't sound like anything wrong. What power did that give him over you? They had no response. My turn to speak, I explain how she tried to get me to rob a guy, how she wanted me to write a letter to take the blame, how she used her position as honor council chair to break state law and violate academic policy, and summarized that we were only there because she wanted revenge on me. I watched V and her lawyer stutter and squirm uncomfortably under the judge's questioning, case dismissed. All that information I gathered to defend myself was not going to waste. I took it to a newly hired honor council investigator called Meg who had no affiliation with V. I told her what corrupt administrator had done to defend V. A week later, I was told by Meg there had been a meeting with the school police, the provost, their legal team, then the provost himself decided to file a complaint against V. I had to meet with the police to file a statement about V trying to recruit me to rob someone, but other than that, I was out of the loop. I later learned the results. V lost her slot at that school's professional program. Her program director yelled at her at the top of his lungs, you will never go to this school. I know admissions and will see to it. She got expelled. Her two degrees, biomedical engineering and biology, with a minor in chemistry, were withheld for six years, and her transcripts would carry a permanent mention of an honor code violation. Her clients who graduated had their degrees retracted, with similar mentions on their transcripts, and current clients were also expelled. The school changed its policy on reporting date requirements to like 60 or 90 days. Me, I am in professional school. V had her chance to get away with all of this until she tried to get revenge on me. I reduced this supervillain from owning a fleet of beta male minions, being the most connected person in the university, and having a lucrative future in ripping people off in the medical industry to the last time I saw her riding an effing scooter. Does anyone else here think that OP has a lot more in common with V than he'd like to admit? I mean, you could have saved a lot of trouble and just walked away at any point.
I mean, especially at the point that you looked in her phone and you were described as useful. Not cute, not smart, not hot, useful. But you still let yourself get emotionally involved. That OP is on you. Check out OP linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.